I think there's a lot of pressure on young people that I didn't necessarily have to make your life look better than it is. You get just stuck on your own if you're just doing stuff with just you, if you're making videos at home. So it's just trying to work out what to do, I think is, is the bad side of it. But, and, and not neglecting your family and doing, and doing stuff like that and fitting in at the right, at the right times. Hello all and welcome back to the Scouting Centre. I am your host, Mr. Diz TV, and my guest today was a TV star for seven years on Sakura M, where he was involved in the writing of skits, the production, the booking of guests, also sorting out the music and so much more, as well as being an on-screen talent. He started YouTube in 2018, and his one-of-a-kind videos has accumulated over 6.1 million views from 197 uploads and he has over 114,000 subscribers. He's also a Twitch partner where he has over 16,000 followers and he used to stream Football Manager. He streams some of the games that he likes and hopefully we'll see him stream again soon. He's previously co-presented, produced, written and directed other podcasts such as Thinky Thinky Make Make, and he currently co-hosts the number one podcast in the UK, the number one podcast in the UK, in the Happy Hour podcast. He runs a brewery, co a brewery company called The Bin Day Brewery, and he also has a production company called Dry Lunch Productions. If you could write a list of top tier guests that I wanted when I started this all the way back in January 2001, this person would be in that upper echelon. I'm so happy to have him on. It is the former lowdown panelist of the FM Streamer Showdown. It is Robbie Knox. Robbie, how are you, buddy? I'm very good, thank you. Wow, that made me sound vaguely all right. <laughs> what, an, what an introduction, that. I might just play that when I wake up in the morning before I get out of bed. <laughs> that could be your alarm clock. Yeah, I might do that. I think I'm just like, I'll come to get up. Yeah, me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, Robbie, what wow. a life you've led. Like when I was researching you seriously, like this podcast could be like a, a five parter, to be fair. Uh, so I've had to try and condense it over things in relation to your content, but what a life you have led. People say that, but I think I'm just older than most of the people in YouTube. And as a result, I've done more stuff. I don't think I've actually done more than they'll have done at the same age a lot of the time. I just think <laughs> I just think I've I've been alive for longer. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is good, which is good as well. Um, but like, if you were to have a content highlight or, or a highlight in your life, what would it be? In terms of, like, as in something I've made or something? Yeah, so that something I've... you've made. My favourite videos that I do on YouTube are that I've done a few videos where I go skiing when I've gone on skiing holidays. And I made what well, two? One, one in particular where I went to Whistler, and another one where I went to Telluride in Colorado. And those I think are I'm really proud of. They're. I've spent a week filming them, at least a week editing them sort of thing. And they look, I think they're really good sort of like travel vlog type things. Those are my favorite things. Soccer Am I'm really proud of. I think I really enjoyed doing that at the time. Um, yeah, so probably between, let's go with the skiing videos because they're more recent. <laughs> no, no, and that's... Happy Hour. I forgot about Happy Hour. I love Happy Hour. <laughs> I forgot to do that. I, yeah. I was, was going to pump just to say Happy Hour, Happy Hour, Happy yeah, Hour. Yeah, Happy Hour. It'd be Happy Hour. Actually, Happy Hour is great. Yeah, I do like Happy Hour. Well, we will talk about your YouTube happy hour um, later on in the podcast, but let's start with Soccer IM. How did that come cool. about? So I, um, brief history, I was, of me, I was born, uh, like most people. <laughs> I, I went to school, I went to university at UEA in Norwich, and while I was there, I did student radio, amongst other things. I did economics, but I didn't want to be a banker or an economist or anything like that, so... Uh, then I went to Canada for a year because I couldn't be asked to get a job. Then I came back and I wanted to get into media stuff. And a guy I knew from university, Dan Trelfer, he was working at a TV studio in Wandsworth and he managed to get me in for an interview there. And I got a job there. That was like about six days after I got back from Canada, I started work. And then I, he, about a year later, he was working at Avalon, who were uh, Tim Lovejoy, who was the presenter and producer of Soccer M at the time. They, he was working at Avalon, who were the, his agents, and that he knew that I watched Soccer AM, and he knew that people that Tim was looking for someone to work at Soccer AM in a role about my level. And I went and applied for the job. I went for an interview, and they offered it to someone else. He couldn't start in time, so I got the job. Hey, <laughs> well, that's mad how that that kind of circle of events has happened. Obviously, moving to Canada, coming back to Canada, all these other kind of uh, chips have fallen uh, into place. 
when you started working at Soccer M, did you ever envisage it would be what it ended up being for yourself? Uh, it was already quite popular, not to the degree it became, I think, but it was like I'd watched it before. I loved it. I knew there was a lot of people who liked it in that in football. It was sort of quite well known, not necessarily outside of that. Um, I, I know including football fans in that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I expected really. I was just excited to get a job working on an actual TV show, and and it was a weird thing to work on because you get more freedom than you would on any other TV show. I think it was the closest thing to YouTube sort of things now, where you can just do what you want, sort of thing. Within reason, we could do what we wanted with Tim obviously being in charge, but we were sort of left alone to do anything. Really, no one was ever executive producing, checking in on us or anything like that. So, um. It was, a, it was a brilliant job to have my twenties, and and I don't know what I expected going into it, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So you've used that phrase a couple of times. You used it in the word association game. You just used it now. It was a brilliant mm. job to do in my twenties. Tell me why that was. Because I didn't have any commitments and stuff like that. It was long hours, so we'd. I mean, we did Tuesday to Saturday. Tuesday was fine. We did like probably like nine till uh, six. Wednesday was probably about half eight till seven most days thursday probably getting eight wouldn't leave till about eight or nine friday we'd get in at eight in the morning and probably wouldn't leave till like one and two three in the morning and then have the show have to be in at the show for six or seven sort of thing so it was it was quite intense and also you couldn't take holiday during the football season you couldn't um you worked every saturday obviously except when the show was so with a family now it wouldn't be a great job for me personally to do but it was a brilliant job to have when i was younger so what were you doing throughout all those hours so um we come in on a tuesday morning we would have an ideas meeting where it was just the sort of first things of what we can do in the show because there'd be things that were regular things that would happen every week but also you need new stuff you might, it might be ideas like there were things that you could put in if you were short of ideas to pad it out like i think we should have a we should get so and so on the phone because this has happened or i think we should this would be a good idea for a guest or it might be ideas for sketches. It might be, uh, well, anything really, any sort of new features, any anything at all that you, that come to mind, either from the weekend's football or just thoughts that you'd had. Uh, that would be then, and then things would be get said. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's not bother with that. Let's do that. And they we'd go through, and then a lot of it would be like filming stuff, editing stuff, um, getting in props, getting in costumes, writing stuff. Uh, towards the end, my stuff was. My stuff said stuff a lot there. So was the end, my job was a lot to do with the guests. So I would sometimes I would be booking guests, sometimes other people would book them. And if we had three or four guests, I would get in touch with their agents or whoever we'd book them through, so, uh, arrange a chat with them. So I'd phone up whoever we had on, have a little chat with them, use that chat to write an interview for Tim and Helen, um, sort out their travel all that sort of stuff. So a lot of different things. And then Friday morning, we'd have our final script meeting where we'd go through everything, confirm everything. And then it was just sort of, right, now we need to get everything in place. Now we know exactly what we're doing. We need to get everything in place for tomorrow and do that. And then, and then yeah, so a, a lot of different stuff depending on what my role was at the time. Well, that's mad because that must have set you up for loads of skills going forward. But I want to ask the question, so was it? did it feel like work? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, it was, and we'd moan a lot, like everyone does in any workplace. I'd, I'd be sort of moaning about whatever had been going on or how much we had on or how rubbish things were, were or something like that in different ways. But then you'd go and do the show, it would go really well, and you'd be in the pub watching the Manchester Derby with Noel Gallagher or something, and, and you'd go, do you know what, this is all right. This is quite you know, quite a unique position to do this. So, um, so yeah, it, it definitely did feel like work, but it was work that I was sort of quite passionate about and, and engaged in, if you will. Because I think a lot of people think when you hit your dream job, it's just rosy all the time, isn't it? It's like they have they kind of set it up as being a dream job. So you'll love it all the time. You'll love it all the time. You, you, you'll constantly be passionate about it. There won't be any dips. But it seems to me there like you're experiencing that. There were times where like morale was maybe a little bit low, maybe overworked, uh, underpaid, yeah. those kind of feelings. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I say so. I don't think we were particularly well, but I mean, I was doing music at the time, so I was sort of thinking, well, I I was getting free CDs. It was at the time free CDs and and gig tickets to most gigs that I wanted to go to. So 
I sort of think, well, if I was getting paid better, I'd just be spending my money on CDs and gig tickets. So that's sort of all right. Sort of thing. And, and, it, and, it, and again, I, I don't think when you're young, you should be within reason worrying about the money. Obviously, you've got to pay bills and stuff like that. But I think, I think it's a time to learn skills, explore things, do things that you want to try when you don't have a need. Like I couldn't go and I have to have a certain amount of a certain amount of money now because I have three children and they have to eat stuff and wear clothes and things. So um, I couldn't live at the level that I could when I was younger, sort of thing. But if you know what I mean, in, as in, after a little bit more. So I don't have as much freedom to go on tangents that that, that young people do. So I think, I think that's a real advantage with youth. So yeah, it was that those are the sort of issues. But overall, I mean, we were aware it was a pretty good thing to be doing yeah well was it always a plan for you to become an on-screen talent no not on that i mean i enjoyed doing so i enjoyed when i was at uni i did like student radio i wanted to do radio my my dream, dream job when i left uni would be to host the radio one breakfast show mm. um but i so i never intended to do on screen stuff but i was i was there for like a couple of weeks and then it would be what would happen was someone would say like we need someone to be an old woman for a sketch with like no lines they said, Robbie, do you want to be an old you'd be an old woman? So I dressed up as an old woman. And then you'd do that, and then that would last for then if you did that all right and you didn't do something mental, then maybe you get something else, and eventually you have something with some lines in it, and then you don't do a character that was popular and that would come back for another week or a few weeks or something like that. So um yeah, it was it, it, you just sort of got given things to do. There's never people would come down to the show at the weekend and say, Oh, you guys all like comedians then going, no just got asked to dress up as as jim morrison or whatever it was like that. yeah well did you notice a change in your profile being recognized for instance when you did become an on-air talent because suck am for a period of time was really 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 popular it was the show the saturday morning show with that shadow of a doubt yeah, yeah more so once i started doing things as me and not wearing wigs and stuff because i was doing like interviews in the streets and stuff and i was on camera a bit more like before when I had like, I mean, I didn't have, a, I was, didn't have a moustache when I first got there. So, but I had a, like a fake moustache for one of the characters, a curl and ginger and a, and a ginger wig sort of thing like that. So I didn't really look that much like me, but particularly I grew a beard in 2004 and it was before people really had beards. Like I know some people had beards, but they weren't, <laughs> now loads of people, you've got beards, loads of people have beards <laughs> now. But, um, but then it was kind of just me, Serge Kasabian and Justin Lee Collins that had beards. <laughs> so um so then it was quite i was quite easy to spot i think because you'd sort of stand out a bit anyway having a beard and um and I also then i was going to places where the audience where i was a man in my 20s and most of the audience were probably men in their 20s sort of thing so i was going to the sort of places like pubs and bars and clubs and stuff where and gigs where i'd meet people it's a lot easier now in that I I do the school run and stuff like that. I do go to pubs, but not the same, not necessarily the same pubs as as everyone else. So, so yeah, it was. I, I, there's, there's points where you'd go every time I went out, you'd get people coming up to you. Yeah, would that impact you in a certain way? Would that kind of change your plans, or was that something like just hey, it's it's part of the job? I think it's just a thing. I think it's different if you are David Beckham and you literally cannot, and it affects where you can go. But the good thing about Sir Graham is it was something that was, it was hard enough to find that you only would watch it if you liked it. If you're just on BBC One, I think, people will just stumble across it and go, I hate this show, but watch it anyway, because it was the BBC One. But I think people had to actively seek out Sir Graham, so you wouldn't really watch it unless you liked it. Um, and I don't think sort of fame is, in the loosest possible sense, is necessarily good or bad for most people who have a sort of A level of it. It's just a thing. Like there's good and bad things of it. People are nice. Like I was in, I was sat at a pub in Newcastle a couple of nights ago. I don't know anyone there, and I, some guy came up to me because he watched my videos, and he had a nice, I had, I had an hour to kill anyway. So he had a nice chat with some people, sort of thing. There's opportunities that come from things. People invite, invited me to things. You've just met me out and about. But, um, but equally, it's a bit weird when you're talking to someone and you see that someone, you sort of, it sounds a bit weird. You sort of see that someone's recognized you and you can see them looking over but you're also you're having a conversation so if i was having a conversation with you but you can also see this going on at the side it's just it's just a bit a bit weird or a, a, a different not not bad just a different feeling 
sort of thing. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. For me personally, it wasn't bad or good. It was just a, a thing. It's because you're being talked about, right? And I think everybody always notices or has that bit of feeling when you're in a place and the stranger's talking about you. I don't think that feeling ever goes away. So is is that something that kind of yeah it's a bit weird and you, you also it, it, it puts you in sort of slightly weird situations of how to react to things like we did a happy hour drinks in a pub a murderous pub up in norwich recently we just sort of mentioned to we just put on twitter we're gonna go to the pub if anyone wants to come down and have a drink anyone does and when we got there there were already people in there we knew there were people there to see us but we got in and sort of sat down and then no one really came over we're like it's quite weird because you can't go up to people and go hey are you here to see us <laughs> But equally, it's like it's like this it's like a cool thing. And then people quite often will come up and talk to you. And then afterwards, they'll message and go, um, oh, I really want to get a photo, but I, I didn't want to ask or something like that. And I'll say, yeah, you should have. It doesn't, I don't care. It's absolutely fine. But equally, and you'll see people sort of thinking, like holding their phone, but you don't want to go, hey, do you want to get a photo? Because <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's mental. It's just like, like mental. So you can't, it's, it, there's lots of weird little sort of etiquette, <laughs> social things that come up from it that are just a bit awkward um but i don't know you just have to get through them just go around group to group on robbie knox and just see yeah, just see it. Go, hey, you guys yeah because if you just go to a group and go hey we're probably you probably come to see us and they go <laughs> no mate, we just want to watch the football we go all right okay fine <laughs> and then, and, but then you've also got to sit in that pub with other people for ages it's just a bit, a bit embarrassing so yeah <laughs> nothing more humbling there yeah eventually we just sort of went uh, just whenever we go, hey, are you here for happy hour stuff? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah. So your time at Soccer AM came to an end. Why was that? I'd been there for seven years. I was a bit bored of it just because I wanted to do something different because I think you get bored of anything if you do the same thing endlessly. Um, but I didn't want to... We were doing a lot of exciting stuff towards the end and I didn't want to leave... And then my mates at work going, oh, we're doing this now. Like, like last few years, I went to like three Champions League finals. We played football at Wembley. Went to Noel Gallagher's 40th birthday party. We're doing like weird, weird stuff for, for things I found weird anyway. But um, so I didn't want to then to get a phone call going, oh, yeah, we, we're getting we're getting to come on for the last 10 minutes of the World Cup final or something. <laughs> so I didn't know. I didn't want to miss out on that. But then Tim got an opportunity to start up an internet TV thing called Channel B that was at... Um, Simon with Simon Fuller, who managed David Beckham and Andy Murray at the time, and this ran and then the Spice Girls and Pop Idol. Um, so he said, Do you want he said to me and a few others, Do you want to come? And for me, it was some of the others, I think it was more of a sort of, oh, I don't know, but for me, I was like, Yep, 100% because I was thinking about leaving anyway. So I, I, I just went, went for that, really. So that, that was that was the thing that we went to do, but not necessarily, I wanted to leave anyway, if that makes sense. Because those relationships in Suck I Am, do they continue to today? Like people like Tim, I know that Tim Lovejoy has been on your, your YouTube channel in the past. I know Tube yeah, as well. Yeah, I I've, I'm in a WhatsApp group with Tim and a couple of other friends that I that I've so I hear some communication from in most days. Um, Neil, who I did Curl and Ginger with, he is operations director at Hashtag. I think that's his title anyway. Um, so he's doing that. Um, and I, it, I hear from a meet up for a drink with him probably once a year or something like that, but but text him occasionally. Uh Sheep it doesn't really live around, but I, we message about random stuff when something happens or someone remembers something from Soccer M. We just you just get random text messages about a random thing that happened or a random bloke that we met like 15 <laughs> years ago or something like that, or 20 years ago, whatever it was. Um uh yeah, Fen as I'm I message occasionally tubes as I've I've got a video coming out with tubes soon. We went out to Spain for a weekend to just do some filming out there. Uh, I try to remember. Rocket, I see around a bit. But yeah, I'm mean, still in touch with everyone. Um, and I see them occasionally, but I live in Norwich now, so I'm not that close to most of them. Now, it seems amazing, though. Like from that, it seems like that's set up. You, firstly, the skills that you've got from Sakura Yem, obviously, everything you did backstage, the on air talent part, it seems like it's really set you up with then lifelong friendships as well. So it did cater for your professional and personal life, to be fair. Yeah, I think I think if you work for someone that long with people that you like, you get along with them. Like, like I just think like Neil and I, we've been like, I've met with him in either, I've met with him in Thailand, we've been to various countries around, sort of thing like that. I don't think you would on paper put me and Neil together as good friends. I don't know why. I just, I just think because we were in that work environment, we, we sort of, came together like that or something but 
but yeah, it's, it's, it was certainly good like that. And from a professional point of view, yeah, I learned a huge amount of stuff about production and uh, the import having high standards and also work the amount of work that we had to do. I very rarely now think I've got too much to do or I can't get this done. I think I, I think I've got a much higher propensity to take on work than other people because I know that you can just make a list of stuff and just you move one mount you move a mountain of stone at a time. Do you know what I mean you just do do a little if you just keep chipping away at things you'll get stuff done. So I learned a lot about were work and production and and ideas and not being afraid to kill things that are doing well because it went because you've got to keep evolving stuff so yeah a, a lot mostly from a huge amount from tim lovejoy who i think was a is an absolutely brilliant producer and i learned a huge amount from him and then that sets me up nicely in relation to you starting dry lunch productions was mm-hmm. that something you felt like you had the skills for after your time at Soccer AM or was that sort of like Yeah, so it was as much after Soccer AM we went on to do um, this Channel B thing and the idea, it was going to be like TV sort of thing, internet TV. It was like YouTube before there were YouTubers sort of thing. YouTube existed but nobody made money on it or had a job doing YouTube. So it was like internet TV sort of thing. And you still see clips from it pop up on weird like Facebook pages with like a billion views or something. <laughs> These weird little sketches. But it was um, there we learned to use cameras and edit ourselves. And uh, for the editing, a lot of the stuff, if you, I'd spent seven years in edit suite. So it's just literally you would sit with an editor and just go, okay, in point here, out point there, let's put that clip in there now, do this and put this in. So it's really, there's not that hard actually editing the basic levels because you just kind of need to know what button it is, the button that you've just told the editor to press something in hindsight. If we'd learned that at soccer, we could have saved them a lot of money. Just done it ourselves. <laughs> um, you already so, working enough hours, Robbie. You couldn't. You couldn't. You well, couldn't. yeah, but I mean, it's no different. I mean, you're sitting in the room with a man pressing the buttons. Yeah. You're telling a man to press you the just... buttons. I mean, obviously, there's there's the higher end bits of editing and, and outputting things that you need to understand. But that was the that was um, pretty good for that point of view. Um, the uh, I completely forgot what the question was. So, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So a lot of a lot of skills at that that then let me go on to do a production company stuff and with that we we've been charity for two years we spent quite a lot of money didn't really make any and got politely asked to leave and um then we i thought do you know what soccer was my favorite show i looked at the other things around i thought i don't really want to go and work on any other TV programs to be honest because i don't really like them as much um so I thought I'll start, and I didn't really like getting made redundant. So I thought if I start my own business, then it's going to have to get pretty bad if I make myself redundant. So I'll just I'll just do that, and I did that for a number of years. So how did that then help you with making YouTube content? Well, I mean, it gave me the sk- the camera skills and the um, and the editing skills, and also I had some quite good, relatively expensive equipment. Um, from the production company but I never really thought about doing YouTube because I didn't watch YouTube I knew YouTubers I knew Jack Jack was a friend I had a few other friends I knew Spencer FC and and all that but I didn't really I didn't I watched Jack's stuff and all this but I didn't I would never go on and watch YouTube I didn't have favorite YouTubers I would go onto YouTube if I needed to learn how to do something like if I had to fix something or, or work out how the dishwasher worked or something. So I do that, but I, I I thought in my head that YouTube was a younger person's game and it was for people in their twenties and everything was catered to them. I didn't realise there was there were programs about everything. Like if you're into cameras, there'll be a thousand different camera shows. If you're into skiing, there'll be this sort of thing, whatever you like. Um and I was with a guy called Will Brazier who does presenting, he does stuff um on for sport and various other things. And I was we were at Watford's training ground filming with Troy Deeney and he said you should do because I've done podcasts and stuff but he said you should do a YouTube channel I was like I think I'm probably a bit old for that and he said I'm not being I don't want this to come across as rude he goes but I know what it's like being an 18 year old starting uni because every September there's 20,000 vlogs about being an 18 year old starting uni he goes I don't really know what it's like being middle-aged in the nicest possible (laughs) sense I thought okay that's a fair point. I thought, you know, so I'm going to make a YouTube video once a week for six months. Because I think you should, if you're going to try something, you should try it properly rather than do it once and not do it. So I'll do that. And if it goes well, I will 
continue to do it. And after a few months, look at each other. Yeah, I really enjoy this. We're going to keep going. And that's and here we are. <laughs> well, your first video, my amazing life, uh, which is which is a, I'm looking at it now. To be fair, I remember watching that, and I remember just like literally. And I don't swear on this, but I'm just going to say peeing yeah. myself laughing. Okay. Because Good. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause like, I'm 38 years old. So me yeah. like seeing what, and, and I obviously grew up with you uh, to, to, to an extent in relation to like Sakura Yem. And then I fell out. I didn't know anything about YouTube even to like two years ago. And then I see this video of yourself and it's just literally making me laugh because you're talking about doing the school run and you're talking about like, like how you've done all these other things and now you're just like doing the basic things. It was, it was quite funny to be fair. I think there's a lot of pressure on young people that I didn't necessarily have to make your life look better than it is. I, I think there's a, whether or not a lot of people manage not to fall into that trap and stuff. And there's a sort of keep out this be real app and stuff like that. But I think a lot of the time it's trying to, it's putting things on Instagram and everyone does it. Like you put on, you you put onto the sort of interesting bits of your life and it's easy to look at things and go, oh, I'm not doing the things that these other people are doing. I'm not not doing this sort of thing. Whereas everyone has to take the bins out. Everyone has to do certain things. I remember being at Soccer Aim in the green room with Noel Gallagher and talking to him and he was saying that you would get a lot of, he'd get production companies go, I want to, I want to make this thing like at home with Noel Gallagher and film you at home and all this sort of stuff. And he's going, well, the reality of what he was saying, the reality of being me at home is a lot more boring than what they think it is because I'm most of the time I'm eating some dinner or I am sat in front of the TV. I mean, there's not that much going on, something. So most people, unless you are at the level where you have kitchen staff butlers or whatever like that, most people have to do the same sort of sort of stuff. So I think I was quite keen to do to focus on the more mundane bits because I didn't really have those pressures going because I didn't I grew up without the internet until I was like eighteen. Well, doing those videos then, obviously it's quite quirky humour that you use as well. I, I, I've listened to you on your walk with Mark Goldbridge. You described yourself as unintentionally funny or you get the compliment of, you know, you're unintentionally yeah. funny quite regularly. Is that something you've kind of leaned into for these videos? Yeah, I like, I know, but they're the videos that I'm trying to be funny or or at least entertain in, in some way sort of thing. And it's the same with Mark. People do go, oh, but there are people who who don't get it and do think that that I, I I think probably more with Mark than me that it's just that he's not playing a character. Do you know what I mean? Like something I don't imagine Mark Goldbridge on the school run is the same as Mark Goldbridge on on TV sort of thing like that. So I think um, I yeah you should, I sort of lean into I mean it's it's sort of an exaggerated version of me in the same way that I don't know if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is a brilliant show. That's that won't. David is like in real life because they make him a psychopath, but I imagine it's part of his personality, an exaggerated version of it sort of thing. So the reality is I don't get exceptionally excited when it's bin day. I don't go, well, here we go. <laughs> um, but it's sort of, but I don't, but I quite like going outside and taking the bins out because it's nice to get a bit of fresh air. So a lot of it's just exaggerated versions of what I am. Well, what I really like about your YouTube as well is I think there's, places in there where you're trying to help other people like i remember the video where he says what i tell my 20 year old self or and you talk about pressures etc is that something that what, not, sorry where does that come from to, to want to help the next generation i think um i think people look to me as like yoda <laughs> like it's <laughs> like a slightly slightly weird older sort of person no i i, I think there there are things that i've worried about when i was younger that I don't worry about now. And I don't, some, I think sometimes it, well, I think a lot of things you just have to worry about when you're younger. Like you have, you have these insecurities, you have these sort of fears. And even though people tell you stuff, you, you don't, you probably don't believe, or you, or you don't believe, or it still won't help. But, but I think there's an element of, yeah, it will, it will assist you along the way. Or if someone's gone through things that you're going through, I think it can, it can help to hear someone saying things like I had a friend die last year. I did a video talking about that and talking about grief and stuff. And I think that for people who are going through that, that probably does help to hear, yeah, it is going to be a little bit better in the future and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I, I, I think I like helping people in general, but I, I, I 
I try and talk the tread a fine line of not being preachy, but also saying, "Hey, this is what happened to me. It might help you." Something. That's why I try and frame it as in what I tell me, rather than you should do this, because everyone's experience is different, isn't it? People have different problems and different issues. Yeah, no, definitely, and I agree, and I do think you've got that line correct. Well, for me anyway, but um, I, I think from my point of view as well, you use your channel to educate people as well. Now, th we talk about your relationship with Tubes, and obviously he had his heart attack not too long mm. ago. I say not too long ago, it was a few years ago now, but you made that video with him and you discussed about what it's like to have a heart attack. And I feel like you did it in a way that was very respectful, but also like using your using your humour as well and your relationship with Tubes, you can clearly see it. That video could be seen as controversial by certain people, but not as in just the title, not what the contents of the video. Yeah. But it was important for you to get that video out, wasn't it? I think you. most people know the stuff that the NHS tell you about having a heart attack. Most people know if you've got tingling in your arms, that's bad. If you've got chest pain, that's bad. Sort of thing, all these sort of, sort of things and that you should get yourself um, sorted out. I've never heard anyone talk, as Cheebs did, that his penis shrunk beforehand, probably because of something to do with blood working, his heart sort of thing. I've never heard the sort of detailed things like that. So I think it's, it's interesting to talk to a friend. And also, I was interested myself in it. I'd, I'd spoken to him about it. I'd spoken to, obviously, after it happened. But to really just sit down for 20 minutes and go through it in detail in something that will hope, that hopefully educates people about things to look out for and and so like that um, but also in a sort of friendly friendly way and there were there were most almost all the comments have been lovely about it but there's the odd person who goes sort of says oh why is he making jokes about it go, well because that's that's to a friend it's it's that's that's what you do so i think it's but there's any any time any video goes outside of your natural audience or anything you do a tweet or something that goes outside your natural audience to sort of viral in whatever sense you get idiots. <laughs> I mean, like people, people will, will moan about about things. I did I had a tweet about the other day about um, saying about Amazon's reaction to my chocolates melting. I had some, I ordered some chocolates. It was when the heat wave was on. I tweeted something as a joke about this, um, and it was obvious from the thing that I'd cut it off at the point. Basically, they said, "How are you? Um, what's the problem?" And I said, "I said um, I'm good, thanks." Uh, I bought some chocolates and they melted. And then, then their first response was, I'm really pleased to see it, hear that or something like that. <laughs> so it's a funny thing. Obviously, they were answering the first question, but it's just a funny thing. I tweet out there. And then there's people going like, <laughs> once you get out to the, the the sort of fringes of the internet, you get the you get all sorts of meme sites now. People go, go, who buys chocolates online anyway? I go, people don't <laughs> Shops online. What are you talking about? That's not a rule. You can buy anything online now. That's a mental. That's mental. That chocolates is this thing that you have to go to a shop for. <laughs> so yeah, it, you, it, I, I can't remember what, why why I'm telling you this story, but I, th I think things do go a bit crazy when they go out to the, the fringe of it. But that's probably not your question you asked. No, no, it's fine because I think we were talking about basically how people can take things the wrong way on the internet when you're acting in your best. That's of right. Yeah, tubes. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, but then that's a good point to to kind of ask your advice and your experience how do you deal with all the if you experience negativity how do you deal with that being such a public figure i think there's two things of it first of all what are they saying and is it true and um if i'm a lot of the time i think you you should be ignoring things if people are saying if you get those people you're videoing Hey man, that's really racist. I'm not saying you should ignore that. You should be going, "Hey, let me have another look at that," or or something like that. I'm not saying that's happened to me. I'm saying in general as advice, if have a look first of all, and is the feedback real or is it opinion? And a lot of the time, it's opinion. If you're going, "I this isn't funny," or something like that, you go, "Like my um, my son Arlo doesn't like eating certain foods." I, I, Brussels sprouts, whatever like that. He's not, he's not that, that into. I like Brussels sprouts just because he says they don't taste nice. Doesn't mean I'm going to go. Oh, okay. I won't eat Brussels sprouts then, if because that's his opinion. And the, with videos, it's the same with opinions. So and you get you'll get a uh, happy hour chat the other day. There's an episode that came out that we thought was great, and a few people online were saying that they didn't enjoy enjoy it as much. And my 
argument to the, to the guys who are saying, well, I, that's a handful of people's opinions. There'd be hundreds of thousands of people that will listen to it. These people might be right, might be wrong. I mean, it's it's, it's sort of up there. So I, th- I think within there's, there's there's listening to feedback and and a- a- acting on that, whether it's about the content or whether it's the sound wasn't easy to hear or something like that. That's something you should listen to. But if you think something's good, and then one person or a few comments shouldn't really affect you in that sense. They can do if something if people if but you need to try. I think it's and it's not like something you go okay. I will switch that off now. Something. But I think the more you have that attitude and the more you work at that, the the better it will. The the, the better you'll get at, at blocking those things out. Do you also think that people are more likely to complain and then write down their complaints than they are to write down their good positive feedback? Sometimes, but like it's it's a lot of the time the people are, are idiots. Like I mean, like like with like with that tweet, the the tweet the other day, people moaning about things. It didn't bother me in the slightest that people are commenting, "Go, why are you ordering chocolates online?" Because it's because it's it's mental, right? It's like that. Um, but there will be people who would who would get upset by that. If I, I think if when I was younger, I probably would have done sort of thing. If people uh, made that, but also the, you've got to, these are people who are commenting on great British memes. They're having a conversation with a meme space. Like, let's, let's part them. Let's let's ignore those people. <laughs> Sorry, not worry. Let's say whatever they say, we can ignore. Um, I, I forgot, again, I've forgotten the question. Sorry, it's quite early. I've not had that much coffee. <laughs> no, no. I think I think I was just asking the question of: Do you feel like? People who have negative comments are more likely to air them rather than people uh, who've got positive feedback, for instance. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I get a lot of really lovely feedback, and like, I'm not that divisive in my stuff. I think. I think it's. You might not necessarily like my content. I think it's quite hard to hate it. Most of it, because most of it's inoffensive uh, at worst. Um, Mark Goldbridge, I think, if you look at his comments, there'll be people, because it's football and people can be very angry about that, they'll, if you look at a Mark Goldbridge video, there will be one comment of someone calling him an idiot and, and all this, and, and there will be a comment of someone calling him with a goat emoji, calling him the greatest of all time. It can't be both. Do you know what I mean? The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Mark is very good at, at what he does. Um so again, it's just opinion, isn't it? A lot of the stuff, and it, it's people do. I think people are quite good these days at saying nice things when they like things. So I don't necessarily think it's more, but I don't know. I don't know what the percentage is. I find the older I get, the less I care about negative criticism. I care about feedback as long as it's constructive, but I care less about negative criticism if it's just a case of the one or two words, or you know, you don't know what you want about, etc. I care less about that, and I try and like funnel in more positivity. And is that in all of life? Because I find that yeah. not just online. Like I, I don't, I don't, I worry less. You worry less when you get older. You don't, you don't care. Like, and and I think part of it is that more bad things happen, and and you get to a point in your life where where you're doing where you've got bigger problems like that. I remember when I was young. I remember being at uni, and I remember going out and getting drunk and I remember chatting to a girl who's like a friend of a friend and didn't do anything bad but I remember being really drunk and being really embarrassed the next day and now I literally cannot remember what I said I can't remember her name the guy whose friend it was I wouldn't recognize if she walked in the room now the guy whose friend it was I haven't seen lovely guy but I haven't seen for 20 years 15 20 years sort of thing like that it's such an inconsequential thing, but at the time it felt so bad. And then now you look, I've got friends who've had kids that have died. That's a real issue. That's a big thing. So if something that, when that's one of the things that can happen, and I've had friends that have died and things like that, then these little things that you used to worry about aren't as big a deal anymore. You build up resilience and you have much worse stuff happen, which is, shouldn't be a positive, but in some ways it is. I also think there's like certain choices you can make about what you let affect you especially when it's the inconsequential stuff in the in the grand scheme of things mm. when it's some of the stuff that is and i know at the time it might seem like it's it's the worst thing in the world so i'm not trying to take away from that but what i'm saying is 
if you if you carry on acting when you're in the emotion I've learned that through experience as you take that step back and you look at the grand scheme of things if you allow yourself to do that you can realize what is important and what isn't important what is worth worrying yeah. about and what isn't worth worrying about yeah 100 percent. and I've got a lot better at that over the years I think I think you're absolutely right it's it's you've got to take a step back and 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 just go is this a, is this a big thing i think in general i think i think if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture like with my kids i try i'll be as present as possible or something and they'll ask me to do something and sometimes i go oh no not just now and then i sort of think do you know what is there a genuine reason why i'm not doing this or do i just am i just a bit tired of one line on the sofa because i know there'll be a time in the future where i do anything to go back in time and have played my kids sort of things so i'll stop and go oh yeah i'll do it yeah okay yeah let's go and play on the trampoline or let's go and do this sort of thing like that. so i think i think yeah if you i think taking a step back looking at it objectively is always a good move well let's go back to your youtube did you ever think that it would take off the way that it has uh, i thought it would i think i'm quite funny i think i'm good at making videos i think i would get people watching it but i didn't think it would be at the rate it has and i think a lot of the time people look too short term in these things i was thinking i will hopefully be able to make part of my income from this in five seven years something like that. that was what i was genuinely thinking going into it i thought i'll build up and then eventually not not live off it but have a have a, a part of my income from that in in this sort of time scale because because people will message me now and they'll go oh my youtube channel's not taking off you got any advice i look at they've done like three videos or something like that and you've got to remember i'm starting from a position where i've had 15, 20 years of production experience of editing and camera work sort of thing. So I'm already at an advantage in that in terms of that to most people sort of thing. But I think you people, if people want to get into YouTube or content creation, whatever form, and they want to make money from it, I think you're not going to probably, most people aren't going to get there in six months, a year sort of thing. It's, it's something you want to do for your life. And yeah, it's going to take a while. If you If you want to become a doctor, you do like, nine ten years or whatever of training i don't know how much it is the doctors are going to be shouting at this but you do like <laughs> 10 years of 10 years of training um to do to do that sort of thing you've got to expect it's going to be a similar thing in in youtube and that so with your journey going so well in youtube you've obviously done different series as well one of the things that one of your series that i really like obviously being an interviewer myself with this kind of set of mm. podcast is you're going for a walk series where you interview different creators, different people, and you just, you know, get to know them a little bit better and, and you know, let them present themselves to the audience. Tell me why that is something that you do and why that's one of your regular series. Yeah. Um, firstly, it can be quite... Lonely is probably not the right word for me because we've got lots of people around me, but you get just stuck on your own if you're just doing stuff with just you if you're making videos at home you don't really meet people and um so it's nice to do stuff with other people for a practical thing as you know like like collaborating with people a way to grow things because you get access to their audience to a degree and if they like your stuff they might stick around and watch your thing i met a guy in the pub the other day who watched me from going who discovered myself from going for a walk with callum's corner sort of thing like that so so people do come across that and it helps you grow if that's if that's what you're trying to do um, from a practical point of view, I started doing the series when there was a global pandemic and you weren't allowed to meet inside. So um, practically, you had to do, if you want to do something with other people, you had to do it outside. Um, also, what I like about it is that there's nothing in it that anyone else couldn't do bar possibly getting access to the people. Like, like there's no particularly clever camera work. There's no drone, generally no drone shots. I, there's a couple in the Ellis Platinum one, just because I had the drone in the car anyway. But there's not, most of it is just a camera and two people chatting. It's 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 quite accessible, quite easy. And I, I, it's quite, I, th I think walking in itself, you get very quickly past the small talk. If you spend a couple of hours or an hour walking with someone, you get past the small talk, even with just friends when you're not filming it. And you get into sometimes some quite deep stuff with people because you, you're just stuck with someone with no distractions. So I like walking in general and i like walking as a um as a as a field for chats and interviews 
is that something that we can see more of looking forward? Uh, yeah, is that something we yeah. can look forward to seeing more of? Yeah, the problem I've got at the minute is I did something stupid where a few months ago I said I will send anyone who wants it a postcard. And I did a video and said, like, if you give me five pounds to cover the cost of printing them and um postage and all that, I will send you a postcard anywhere in the world. I thought I'd get a few hundred. I got like eight hundred people do this. So I've been writing postcards since March. <laughs> And I feel, and every day I don't finish it because I want to send them all at once. Yeah. So every day I don't finish them, it gets worse because people move house and they email me and it becomes more and more of a problem. So I'm going to finish it this week. I've determined. But that's why I've not been in Twitch because I think I don't want to be on there if I've got some spare time rather than going and doing this. I need to write this because people have paid money, not like it's a fiver, but I've still done this. They've still, I've still promised something. I need to get them done. Um, so because of that, when I've got time, I think, well, if I go into London if I, and do a walk, or I would drive over this, it's going to take a day and all that, whereas I could be doing some postcards and all that. Because I thought I could get them done a lot quicker than I could, but it's, you can't spend a day writing postcards. It's, I, don't, I challenge anyone to just do that because it's exhausting, particularly because each one I'm doing individually, tailored to people, I've got people to write notes, I'm writing individual thing. You, you just can't do hundreds a day. It's, but I'm into like the last hundred, I think. I'm going to finish it Monday, Tuesday. And get them out, but it is it's hard. So that's stopped me from doing the walking things. But loads of people have said they do them. Um, uh, I'm Alex. I saw him the other day. He wants to do one. Sharky said he'd do it. Um, Chi with a C. Oh, but loads of people that I really like have said they do them. So I just need to do them. But I need to get these postcards done. So this week, get a finish postcards, and then after that, I can go forth into the world and make stuff. Well, you know what I love is the fact that it's Sunday morning when we're recording this. Obviously, we've tried recording it a few other times. You've got postcards yeah. to do, and you're still making time for, for me. I really appreciate that then, Robbie. Thank you so much. No, not at all. And, but I don't want to do And I'm, I'm not being... I'm not... I don't want to make it like, like every minute, waking minute, I'm doing these things. Because <laughs> there, are, there are other things. But it's you sort of got to be in the right mindset as well to do them to a degree. Because it's if you're not awake, and it's quite hard to write write some things and to be creative in things because i don't want to i i don't want to just write the same hey thanks for the support man robbie i yeah. want to do a, I, i'm filling each one up with as much as i can fit in on the postcard um so yeah it is uh yeah i i i've i've tried to fit as much as possible but i i'll be glad when they're done put it that way. <laughs> And you'll never, I'm never do I'm it never again. Doing it again. No, never. <laughs> never on that scale. <laughs> the first 200 people I will post a postcard to. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 50. 50. <laughs> yes. I don't... Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I could see myself doing something in the future where I do something like. I don't, if I did like a Patreon or something like that, I'd write people things on that or something like that. But I'm not doing just a one off thing like this because it's just, it's just taking over my life. And it. It means I've neglected other parts of, of the audience through Twitch and whatever like that. But yeah, it's, it's nearly done. <laughs> well, I can't wait for the postcards to be over. I can't wait to see your next episodes of Going For A Walk. Um, I find it really wholesome, to be fair. Like you say, I do feel like you can, you can get really like, like you say, people open up to you. And I think going on a walk out in the fresh air and stuff, I think that really does help. Yeah, I get people get message me going, oh, my dream would be to... Um, my life goal, bucket list thing would be to go to the pub with Robbie and go for a drink or something like that. And it can't be that good because I would quite often want to go to the pub and I measure my mates and they go, no, I can't be arsed. <laughs> so my actual friends don't want to go to the pub with me. So I doubt that the reality of that is. But yeah, I think I think it's, I, I think I'm quite easy to talk to. I'm quite nice and friendly and non-judgmental. So I think people are quite open to talking to me and 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 yeah, it, 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 it seems to be working well. Well, let's move forward slightly now and let's go and talk about, we'll talk about your other form of content creation in relation to Twitch. So mm. why did you get into Twitch? Why Football Manager? Just, you know, tell me about that. I like Football Manager. I played, I bought the first ever Football Manager when it came out in whatever year it would have been. Um, I bought it. In fact, I got the first ever Football Manager before it was released because I went to a computer game show and they had a little store with it before it was officially out. You couldn't buy the shops and I bought it there and me and my friends would play it. And I've, there've been times where I haven't played it, but I've always gone back to it. Um, then there was a pandemic on that you might've heard about. And again, I couldn't really leave the house much. And I thought, and I, I've, I'm married, I've got children. 
it's a lot easier for me to go and play football manager in a room of my own if I'm doing it for work. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was a lot easier for me to sort of go, I'm just going to go and do this. And people watch it. And, and I quickly got, became, well, I can't remember how it goes, affiliate and partner, whatever like yeah. that. And then you've got money coming in from it. So it's quite easy for me to go, to oh, I need to go to work now and go play football manager for a couple of hours. So um, that, was, that was why I, I started doing it really and also the production company stuff wasn't i had a lot more time because a lot of the production stuff had dried up you couldn't really go outside so um so yeah i just had time to do it it was something that was vaguely worky and i enjoyed doing it i will get back to doing it i feel like now i've almost like it's too late to to kick on with the new this version i might as well wait for the next version to come out and then get back onto it but i like to get to doing it on a more structured basis like say i'm going to do monday at this time tuesday at this time and, and and stick to it rather than just this haphazard nonsense that i'm doing at the minute what football manager community on twitch really took to you as well and, and i think that was quite warming and you were also involved in the stream of showdown weren't you as a lowdown panelist yeah i enjoyed that i i felt so guilty doing it because i had so little knowledge of what was going on on it like i, I as in they were like they were, when they were doing the draft they were they were sort of like what what players would you recommend? It was I can't remember what it was. It was all like German, Italian, and someone else. I can't remember what nations it was. But like I don't watch German. I see the odd Champions League game, but I don't know who plays for Schalke. Like I don't know who <laughs> these people are. And and I was so out of my depth in terms of footballing knowledge. Like I'm a football fan, obviously. I've, been, I've worked in it for how many years? I've, I've more obsessed when I was younger, but I don't have a great encyclopedic knowledge of players and that sort of thing so i felt like i was not um not very good at on it so i think in terms of that i think i think i think i was good at playing a lovable idiot role but that can get tiring pretty quickly i think for people if you are there's a point where being a little bit um i, I don't want to sound like i was taking the piss out of it uh, i take the mick out of it by Oh, not caring that I was on it. Do you know what I mean? Because this is obviously a big thing. I was honoured to be asked. I don't want to be going, oh, I don't know this, when everyone else has put all this effort into it. But I was so out of my depth. So I enjoyed I enjoyed doing it. I really liked the Football Manager community. I think I was doing something a bit different on Football Manager in that I'm not professing to be good at the game, or, or especially, I think I'm all right at it, but it was more... A lot of people, most people I've noticed when they play it, they're playing the games on high speed and all this. What I would do when we get to like a cup final or the a big game at the end of the season, we would watch the entire 90 minutes match on my stream and do that sort of thing. So it was more the chat and the football manager is a tiny thing that's going on in the background rather than anything else. But I'm looking forward to the new one coming out because I will, I will get back into it properly. Well, something you might not remember ties us together, Bobby, which is you debuted and me and I debuted on the same stream of showdown. So they yeah, had, yeah, yeah, they, had the, yeah, yeah, yeah. they had the breakdown, which was like yep. the pre-show, then the lowdown, yep. which is what you were part of, yep. and obviously the stream of showdown. So me and you yeah. debuted in the same one. I was part of the breakdown. You were part of the lowdown. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, because I, 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 yeah, I was watching all this stuff and I was going, God, this this thing's amazing, and it's and I and I I was so didn't want to come across as disrespectful to it in any way. Because it's an amazing thing that they're doing, but also I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, yeah. I'd never seen it before. I didn't, I didn't know what was, what was going on. Like I, I, I was just so, so I gave, I contributed so little. Is what I'm trying to say. No, but I think, I think like I say, everyone has strengths and weaknesses, etc. And and I feel like ultimately, when it comes to you, if if people know you, they'll know you'll never be disrespectful. And, and like you say, yeah. you play the yeah. game in a different way. And yeah, and and ultimately, yeah, it, it was still it's still great for me personally as Diz to say, hey, I debuted on the same one as Robbie Knox. <laughs> Had no yeah, interaction so, yeah. with him, but I there debuted on the same one as as Robbie Knox. That that's gonna be that's gonna be on my gravestone. There we go, brilliant. <laughs> well, you need to, it can probably fit something better on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I've I've, yeah, I've okay, led a heavy Monday now, life. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fine. Nothing wrong with mundane. That's, 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 I'm making a living off that. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the Happy Hour podcast. Obviously, the yeah. number one podcast in the UK. Um, tell me about on how Spotify. you got involved Honestly, in that. Honestly, you, you, you've, you've got to add on Spotify there. On really. Spotify. And, and it, 
the the chart that matters on Spotify and that matters in terms of views is the episode chart because the other ones are weighted differently towards new things to sort of almost encourage people like thing. But the episodes one is the one that was some days, most of the time Joe Rogan's top, occasionally we go to top. But in terms of UK podcasts, we're quite often top of that on Spotify. But you gotta remember we're exclusive to Spotify, so our audience is centered around Spotify. So it's more like concentrated, if you will. Whereas I think if you're spread across other things. Either way it's good. It's it's <laughs> it's good. I don't want to play it down, but I also want to be realistic. Yeah. But no, it's it's an amazing part. Obviously, like the chemistry you three have together. But tell me how you got involved in it because you was you weren't one of the original members. Were you? No, I came on first of all. I went down. I said to Jack because I've been friends with Jack for years. I said, Jack, hey, you should get Tubes on. He's starting a YouTube channel. So I came down with Tubes. Then while I was there, Jack said, oh, you should you should come on sometime. So I came on that once. Everyone seemed to like the episode. Uh, then I came back for a couple of other special ones, like like Christmas or Halloween ones, I think. And then um, I we started doing a thing called Happy Half Hour, which was like half hour things, a sort of separate thing that Jack got me to do, with just me and him chatting through life lessons about different topics. We did like a half hour chat each time. And then he signed the deal with Spotify and there's a certain part of the contract was a certain length of episodes. I think it had to do like one like an hour and a half, one that was an hour or something like that. I can't remember the details. But the half hour episodes didn't really fit in to that. So we just said, why don't you just come in and do the main shows with me and Stevie? As I think Jordan had left at the time as well. And um, so I just did, I kind of just came along for a bit and then just started doing more and more. I now I've sort of weaseled my way into doing most of the guest episodes as well. So I just, I'm just kind of hung around until I forget <laughs> part of it. Yeah. Hung around until you're a permanent fixture. Yeah, and now I have a permanent fixture, yes. Yeah. So. What's it like being part of that then? Like, it seems like it's a lot of fun. It seems like a, a lot of laughing. Is is that perception correct? Or is it also a lot of, like, you know, strict hard work before the episode starts? Uh, we talked we talk earlier about things being like, people look at these things and think these are the sort of dream jobs and it's not hard work. For me, it's not hard work. It's pretty, There is a bit, normally, when we beforehand, where we all think there's a little bit of effort to think of ideas for shows when I'm on guest things help write interviews and all that there's a little bit of work there but mostly no it's it's most of it it is chatting with friends sort of thing and and a lot of the time we will plan episodes on in the car on the way down so it's not that much of a much of a, a stretch but it is it's it's my favorite thing I do most weeks in terms of work I, you just go down there and it's it's just having fun with a few friends in a room and it and it's I think I tweeted this this week it's quite weird that you're in a room a tiny little room chatting and you sort of forget, you know, you're making a podcast, you're trying to be funny, but you sort of don't really think that quite many people have, many people are going to listen to this afterwards. So I think you forget, you forget that side of things. I think they're the best ones, right? You're getting lost in the conversation, which is a hundred percent the best way to get a very good conversation. I think so. Yeah. You, you, you sit there and, and, and you're not thinking like, I'm chatting to you now. I'm really enjoying this chat. It's, it's, it's a, I do, quite a few podcasts we were and, and they can vary i'm always happy to do them but they vary in terms of how much preparation people have done how much planning how good they are sort of thing this you've you know you've you know what what, what i'm doing sort of thing so it's we're really halfway there sort of thing like, but I've, i'm really enjoying this chat i'm sort of forgetting that this is a podcast and going oh god yeah <laughs> Oh well, look! Why am I talking to a camera? That's right. That's that's why we're here. Um, so yeah, I, I think I do. I, I think if you, if you sort of get lost in 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 the thing and it, and it isn't, there's not you're not there thinking what do I need to say next? What do I need to do? Sort of thing. Those are, I think that's a good way to go with this stuff. No, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. And whilst I send a guide of questions, I end up going where you take it. To be fair, and I might look at him occasionally just to kind of like say, oh, I might want to really cover that one. But yeah, I, I feel yeah. like but you're a very good interviewer. You're very good. You you you've done the work beforehand it enables you to go wherever you want because you know you know stuff you're not asking ran, random you're not you're not asking things you, you know what you're talking about basically is what, is what i'm trying to say and and then you can ask the right questions and, and go from there yeah so yeah well done you so so, so, so you know this gravestone right it's just been yeah okay. we just had yeah, robbie knox thinks i'm a good interview. interviewer <laughs> very good i said very good i think um, uh, so yeah, you can, if there's room for Barry on it, maybe bin off the stuff about Streamer Showdown. And, and that one, and put the yeah, we'll, we'll see how much the wife is willing to spend on my see how much there is. Yeah, you don't know how much if they're charging per character. You yeah. might not. We'll see how we go. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. V, v dot good. <laughs> v dot good. Yeah. There we go. I oh, love that. Love that. Um, so, Robbie, where do you see Happy Hour going in the, into the future? In the future, I see us doing a tour. Um, that is something we want to do. We've, we've did a, a sort of test one a few months ago. Um, so I think we will we will do a national tour in the United Kingdom. Um, I uh, I don't know when that will be or what. We haven't we haven't spoken to anyone yet. I think, um, but we need to get onto that soon. Um, keep keep going and keep growing. Hopefully, sort of thing. I think I think it's 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 going well. We need to sort of up the work on it. I think I think if we I'd. I'd chat to the guys it'd be quite good i think if we because we all live in norwich now we're all we're all close by if we did a little bit more planning in the week sort of thing to try and improve things um so yeah hopefully hopefully i I think just growing getting more and better guests getting better interviews and and exploring the sort of live arena if you will maybe not arenas (laughs) i mean the overall arena rather than going to booking wembley arena oh i love that Eighty thousand people you might yeah they turn up though Yeah, we're going straight to stadiums, not arenas. <laughs> we're not going to belittle ourselves with that. But it does feel like season on season, you are going up a cal- up a caliber. That's wrong. You are going up a popularity level of guests. So, like, you know, they have yeah. more of an audience. Yeah, and I think also, I mean, Jack does the booking for guests generally, so it's all on 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 him or something. And Spotify started helping out a little bit with some with some things, but. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's hard. I think you find it harder to book guests now because I think there's just more podcasts around than there were how many years ago we started. Um, but I think he's, we're still getting some some really good guests and really good guests that we're interested in and people that I like. I like the variety of it. I like that you can have Ellis Platten and um, Johnny Knoxville as guests in the same series sort of thing. I like, I like that you can have that, those such different worlds. On the same podcast, um, so yeah, yeah, I do think it, I do think it's growing, and and hopefully we'll continue to do so. You did mention Ellis Platten there. Ellis Platten was the last guest on the Scouting Centre. I will leave a oh, one of those things up here. What a lovely guy! Oh, amazing, guy. amazing! What an in-depth chat we had. I'll leave the the card up here somewhere uh, if you guys yeah. want to check that out as well. But um, yeah, Ellis Platten was amazing. To be fair, I love He's Ellis. He's such a lovely guy, isn't he? He, he, is. he doesn't live that far from us now, sort of things. So I see him occasionally. Um, but yeah, I'm, re- I'm a huge fan of him. I think he's he's he's, he's very funny, and very good, and, and smashing it at the minute as well. Oh, he really is. He went to Brazil, didn't he, for the um, opening? He went to what was it? Was it Flamingo versus Corinthians? I think that was the game he went to. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Yeah. It might be Fluminense. Um, but yeah, um, and and also, do you find that knowledge is like the content creation center of the world? Yeah, it's just in Norwich and Brighton for whatever reason. Brighton, I get because it's like. It's like a sort of it's near London, but a little bit nicer. Um, no, nice is the wrong word. I like London. <laughs> it's a bit more. If you want a more chilled out version of London, you've got all that sort of sort of that place there. I think it's a nice, a really nice, nice city. Right, it's quite. It's a city that I think values diversity and creativity sort of that like, like it's a unesco city of literature um there's a lot you get a lot of culture there because there's nowhere nearby all the bands of a certain side i mean if you're playing stadiums i mean well john was here recently but most of the time you might not get your green days coming but you'll get um most, most sort of bands playing concert venues will come by um because there's not a lot of competition you get a lot of stuff there it's quite a sort of welcoming place there's a sort of Quite a nice young population for the university and all this sort of thing. So I think it's it does feel like a place where people can just do what they want. I went down to Norwich Pride the other week, um, and it was such a lovely atmosphere with an accepting atmosphere with everyone, sort of thing. So I think um, I think it, it does feel like a place where people can just sort of do what they want, and people aren't generally judging. So yeah, I think I think it is a place that that you can do stuff in. I've said this to Mrs. Desi. Um, I've said to her, I've said um. I think we need to move to Norwich. Is that why? I'm like Jack Mate, Stevie. I'm like Robbie Knox, Benji, Ellis. Yep. Like there's, there's, yeah. I would say there's like loads of people that live down there in content creation. It's just, it's just great for networking as well, I guess, or or like potentially meeting up. Or like you said, now with like you and Stevie and, and Jack, you can like literally meet up somewhere and be a bit more like 
feel that in relation to your preparation to Happy Hour? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a lovely place. Have, have you ever been? Uh, no, never. Which is mad because I always, look, I, it's, it's only recently that I realised that Norwich was as open and welcoming. So, so, yeah. so, so, so being, so my job was very much West Midlands based. Mm-hmm. That's kind of stopped now because I left my job like a few yep. weeks ago. Um, so you kind of just stay around where you are, if that makes sense, doing what I did. Yeah. But now it's like, well, I've got all the time in the world. So I've said to, I have said to, to, to like the wife, like we will, there are plans to kind of like go and explore the country a little bit more. Yeah. Because now well, I've come got visit, time. Come visit, shout on your own, we'll go and hang out. Come oh. visit, we'll show you around. Honestly, I'd love that, Ravi. Yeah. I'd love. Let's that. do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's um, yeah. I think I think it's it's. I mean, I similar boat. I mean, before the pandemic, my my wife works in London, so we we had to live near the M25. But then she hadn't been in the office for eighteen months, and we're like, kind of can live anywhere, can't we? Because they can't exactly go. Um, oh no, you have to be in the office every day. So I think so. We just sort of moved away and went. Hey, by the way, I don't live in London anymore, so <laughs> kind of have to work from home. So she goes in like once every couple of weeks. Um, but um yeah so i've i've we were suddenly like where we can live wherever and we we love norwich i went to uni here that's the connection to it um uh but yeah it's it's a great it's a great place i'd thoroughly recommend it as a place to live oh that's great to hear that's great to hear but yeah it's 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 just mad how many content creators that i know have um i'm pretty sure so i've done 45 episodes of the scouting center podcast and i imagine i've had about 33 or 34 different guests i wouldn't be surprised if at least eight or nine of them had like around that area around the norwich area which is wow, yeah a, which is a disproportionate amount for the scouting set podcast <laughs> yeah it's quite weird because i don't know i mean with jack and stevie obviously went to school together mm. and i suppose i don't know i don't know why exactly it is I don't know because I, I don't know. Maybe there is a sort of a football manager sort of scene or something like that. People, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I guess. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anything. Content creators unite, Norwich. That's what. That's what we should there just we do. Go. We should. All, but okay. So moving forward from that now, um, we've talked about your Happy Hour podcast. I want to talk to you about you personally and your experiences in content creation. Mm-hmm. What was the worst thing about being a content creator? What's the worst thing. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, there's there's times when you can't be bothered and you've got to try and do things. Like if you've got, if you're tired, if you're a bit burnt out, you've got lots of stuff to do. I think I think it's trying to manage doing stuff because it's 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 a sort of you're it's up to you to make your own hours and you to do stuff and. It's. I, I think the hardest bit is trying to work out what you should be doing when and not doing too much stuff. Because if it's, you make loads of videos and then you're like, oh, I'm so I did vlog October when I first started. It was like, I suppose we did a, a video a day. I did like 20 odd days in October. And it was too much. It was exhausting. It didn't help the channel. It was people were unsubscribing because there's too much content sort of thing. Um, so it's just trying to work out what to do, I think, is is the bad side of it. But and and not neglecting your family and doing and doing stuff like that and fitting in at the right at the right times and uh, so i think trying to work out that is the hardest bit of it and and but that's everyone's got that in their life to a degree it just it just it can interfere with your life whereas now i'm a lot better at, at saying Do you know what i'm not going to be answering emails at the weekend i'm not going to read them and uh, and um I, I will generally check my email once a day. I don't have it on my phone anymore. Um, if something's urgent, for even for even for a production company client, something urgent, they'll phone you up. Do you know what I mean? They'll they, they'll do that. Um, and just being a bit better at, at sort of knowing what to say yes to, what to say no to, what to prioritize, and and working all that. I think that's the the hardest bit of it. I don't know if you find the same. I think at the minute because I'm in this stage now where so. I'm unexpectedly doing this full time, which is like, like, so like, so like three weeks ago, I had plans. My wife hasn't been very well. Those plans changed. Um, I, I always knew I was going to leave my previous, previous job, which you know what it is, but you know, I'm waiting for a time mm. and a place to kind of say what that is. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And then, but that was to start a new job. But then 
it was 16 weeks away from home. After three days, my wife wasn't coping very well. So I came home and I was yeah. like, well, I love doing the Scouting Center podcast. I love making content. Let's give it a real go. I'm in a yeah. fortunate position where I can try and do this for a prolonged period of time because I've, you know, we've saved. And also, I think it came to a point where I've got, I'm 38 years old. I never really chased my dream. This is now becoming a bit of a dream, if that makes sense. So I want to yeah. kind of see how far we can take it. So That's fabulous. So and, and thank you. Um, so so now it's a case of I'm kind of building and I'm kind of like trying. Maybe I am doing a bit too much. Like I'm working like 12, 14, 15 hour days, but I feel like I can. I do still take some time off. So like after today, after this interview, I'll probably just chill out to be fair the rest of today. But then tomorrow I'll be up in the morning streaming on Twitch and then I'll do whatever else. I'll plan videos, et cetera, et cetera. Because I'm still trying to find my forte because I know the Scouting Center podcast is my forte. But I'm still trying to find something more regular. So I'm, I'm kind of dipping into football YouTube at the minute. So I'm just trying to like figure something out, if that makes sense. Yeah, but that's good. And it's, it's I think I think you do have to do a lot of work. I mean, people will look at YouTubers or something like that and say, we've oh, got an easy life sort of thing. But they don't say all the stuff you've done to get to that point. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about people of a, of a, of a higher views and subscriber number or something. But I think, you, I think there's a lot of work... That, in the build up to get to that point and even sort of maintaining things like that. And, and I, until things really blew up, I would reply to every single comment, every single Instagram DM, all this sort of stuff like that. I, I physically didn't now because there's just too many. I try and do as many as I can, but I'll get, even now I, if I'm on a train or something, I'll just go, I'll just reply to a few Instagram DMs, go into my message requests. I'll reply to people and people go, Oh my God, that's made my day that you've, replied sort of thing like that and it, and it i think all those sort of things help and like from from a trying to make it a, a professional thing you never know who's gonna help you achieve that goal in terms of financially as well sort of thing of twitch you've got subscriptions there, there's people who have spent hundreds of pounds on subscriptions on that which i think is absolute madness from the very kind on uh, on that but you never know which person you interact with, you build a sort of bond with and a connection is going to be the person that's going to go, hey, I want to help you. So the, more, the more you do, the, 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 the closer you get to making it a full-time thing if that's someone's goal. And this is the thing as well. So like with the Scouting Center podcast, I'm fortunate because I've had people in the football manager world. I'm now breaking out from the football manager world. Still some links, still some, some, some loose ties, but ultimately I'm trying to move the podcast on if that makes sense so like people yeah. have i've had james walker on ellis platten and now yourself like having you free on is massive for me and that helps me just by you agreeing to be on the podcast and it's like yeah. it's like these like yeah. interactions and stuff like they mean the world to me so i really appreciate it yeah but but you're doing it well as well i mean as i say i've i don't know obviously not anything i've been on a lot of podcasts most of them are uh decent some of them are really good some of them it's, I mean, I'm, I'm polite, I've said it a bit, it's, it can be a little bit painful sort of thing like that. Like, so, so the, 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 but I don't know, I think if, you, if I've got a bit of time to do things, there'll be some, I've got better at uh, doing them. So, some of the sort of ones where, it's, you, I mean, you, you see podcasts, you can see whether or not they're established in that. Like, there's, some, there's something like most podcasts never get to like seven episodes or something like that. We'll do it for a bit and give up sort of things. So I've got a bit better at saying like things that are established and people have put a bit of effort in like this. I'll say, say yeah, I will find a time to do that and, and make that happen sort of things. But I'll still do the other ones where they've only done a few episodes, but I'll go, okay, I'm going to spend this morning, I'm going to spend three hours doing podcasts. And people reply, I go, I can do it this time here, rather than being in an, in an evening, having dinner and go, oh, I've got to go do a podcast now sort of thing. So I think I'm better at scheduling things and doing that around my schedule. And that's good to hear for yourself, because so, obviously that's your work-life balance as well, isn't it? And that's something you're your key to keep obviously you know you've got a partner you've got three kids you've said as well you've got kittens as well that need looking well, kittens. after kittens yeah <laughs> I've, I've shut the doors so they don't come in and eat wires and destroy <laughs> filming something but yeah yeah nice, nice little kittens internet explorer and fluff ball they're called <laughs> um uh but yeah they um yeah and it's 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 a it's a different difficult thing with kids because the the one of the reasons, well, the main reason really I sort of got into doing this sort of stuff is it means I can spend time at home with the kids most of the time. I can do, I can pick them up from school most days uh, if I'm not a happy hour. Um, you've got that freedom. I can do 
I can do videos around my life. If I go on a holiday, I can do not necessarily with them in. Sometimes they want to be in, sometimes they don't, whatever they whatever they're into. But I can go off and do a little bit of a video while I'm there and help pay for the holiday sort of thing a little bit or, or help um or still be working on my terms. But you've just got to make sure it doesn't become a bit where you're not seeing the kids because you're doing too much work or it becomes intrusive in your life. They're trying to do stuff that that is a I'm trying to say that com- that helps you live the life you lead without taking over your life. Yeah. So it's a balance. No, that that's fair. That's fair to be fair. Um so then knock a knock on effect from that can be tough times when you're making content. So it can be there can be frustrations, videos didn't bang how you'd expect them to you haven't been able to portray the message you initially wanted to. How do you deal with tough times when making content? And and like, how do you bounce back from that? In terms of views, I I genuinely don't care how many views a video gets. If, if every video was dying and no one's watching them, yeah, then it's it's a bit it's a bit different because you you're obviously there's a inherent problem with what you're doing. But day to day, if I make a video, ten or ten out of ten, I I don't care because I think people look too much at numbers in the they get, they get two blinkers on and look at that god oh, that video did badly rather than taking a step back and i've had a few a good few chats with ellis about this um just just on 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 the phone and and, and that because it's not i think it's something that he worries a bit more he messaged me the other day about something saying i'm doing this series i do this series of these videos or something like that um i'm not sure they did particularly well is that a big thing i say i think you've got to take a look back and go okay where was i six months ago mm. where where <laughs> what's what's the bigger thing rather than an individual bit and also not every video is going to be a one out of ten for people who don't do youtube when you put out a video youtube's got this thing that tells you whether out of your last 10 videos how it's doing compared to the last yeah out of the last 10 so it might be at this point you've had four thousand views after a, a, an hour and the last one had two thousand views out of most others have two thousand views you know that this one's proving more popular um, than the others but I, I just think you need to look overall and also i don't think you need mental numbers to make a living out of it if that's what you're doing if that's what your aim is with making content some people are just doing it for fun because i think there's different ways of monetizing things and i think if you build stronger connections with people they will help you i think if i did a patreon i think i'd probably do all right on that because there are people who absolutely love my content and you've built these strong relationships with so i think you've got to look at the strength of the bonds you have with people rather than the number of people if if you want uh, people if i bring out merch or i've not done very much or say i will write a postcard i get a lot of people doing them because i i care and i interact with people and it's not like i put a video out don't read the comments and just just sit around sort of thing i, I think there's there's an essay called i can't remember who it's by called one thousand true fans and it's saying you don't need you need a thousand people who really believe in what you're doing you can live off that if you have a thousand people who are into your stuff and they will pay you whether it's through twitch or patreon or merch or ticket sales for something if they can give you if they give you 50 pound a year that's 50 grand a decent salary most people will be be pretty happy with that you don't need a million people watching your stuff if you've got some people and 50 pound is a cost of living crisis on them but it's not an outrageous amount of money either do you know what i mean if you've got a lot of people could, could afford that sort of stuff in various things so i, I think a smaller more condensed audience more, more committed audience is good because also i don't really want every single person to recognize me in the street because i don't I don't think it's a life I particularly want. And then I asked the question then because I feel like you really want your private time, but I feel like you're also aware that obviously with what you do, there's a consequence to that, which is which is obviously being recognised. You yourself, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I don't think I'm an introvert. I think I'm a shy extrovert. I, I was a shy extrovert, not so much now. When I was younger, I was, I did, did, just didn't have the confidence to go up and just sort of start conversations with people. But no, I, 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 I don't know why I am, really. 
I'm not sure. I'm quite happy chatting to people. I, I, I quite like it. I just, when you're younger, people always say like, oh, fame and money won't make you happy. But when you're younger and you're a bit insecure, you, you think, yeah, it probably would though, wouldn't it? <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're like, I bet, I bet it does. <laughs> and I was, I was, I've not got experience of vast amounts of money, but at Soccer AM, I was a bit famous. I realized, okay, do you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't make, it doesn't necessarily make you unhappy or it doesn't make you, if you handle it properly, it doesn't make you unhappy. It doesn't make you happy. It's just a thing. And then you go, okay, so I imagine money's probably the same. And I've met enough people now who have made a huge amount of money and haven't been happy. And to realize that, and I'm not saying having no money, that will make you unhappy, but that could affect you in that way. But but overall, if, if I had, if I had, and a million pound a year, I don't think I'd be much happier than I am now. Um, so having been famous and then not been famous, it wasn't something that I particularly um, craved. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't like, oh, that was great when I was on TV. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't care. Um, so now it's sort of come back around, and people do recognise me. It's not something I'm particularly bothered about. But also, I wouldn't want to be ridiculously famous. I remember talking to. Alfie Days, the vlogger, I, went, I had a brunch with him through a friend once a few years ago, and he was saying like the ideal number of subscri subscribers to him was like 250, 300,000, because it was enough to live off. It wasn't the pressure of all this sort of stuff. It wasn't, you were getting re recognized everywhere. Um, so I think, I, I don't think the ideal thing in life is to be the most famous person in the world. I think, it, I think that would become intrusive and, and difficult. And Yes, having more money it helps you deal with that a bit, but there's also things you, you want to be able to do. Like I saw a video online the other day of Noel Gallagher in Ibiza at a cafe. I don't know if you saw this. And no, an Oasis song's come on and everyone is singing it at him while he's out with his family sort of thing. And he's sort of quite, he's been quite polite with it, putting up with it, but it must, it must be a bit of a hassle having that sort of level of fame. I mean, you do talk about, and, and you mentioned that about money and being happy and, and 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 that kind of I mean I was I'm I'm practically earning nothing at the minute, which is fine because I'm so happy. As an inside, yeah. I'm so content. So money doesn't necessarily make you happy. Do I, th I feel like finding a passion and chasing the passion is generally what makes you happy. I think money yeah. gives you the gives you some freedom to kind of chase some of those passions. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but I think what well, really fills you isn't the fact, oh, I can buy a PlayStation 5. That doesn't make you happy. What fills me personally, and I feel like the older I get and the more people I speak to, I feel like it's pretty similar. It's finding a reason and chasing yeah. that reason. Yeah. And that's it. And like, and like buying a PlayStation might help you be happy because you have good fun with your friends or your kids or something like that. I've been playing Minecraft this morning with my kids, sort of thing <laughs> like that. They've, they've, um, that it can help it can help facilitate things and if you i'm um, into traveling it can help you go places and i'm not for a second saying that money is important because that's it 100 percent is at the minute there's a lot of people struggling because of the cost of living crisis at the minute. And, it, and it's and they will listen to this and if they see people going oh money's not important it, it is but there is a point where it becomes less important like i i don't know in a massive amount but i can do I can go on a holiday once or twice a year. I can, I can. It's not the end of the world if I get if I get a parking ticket. Right? It's not, it's not gonna. There are people for whom that would be a real. You got to pay fifty pounds sort of thing. It's, it's, it, it's not the end of the world for me. But I remember reading something in an article. And it's saying like there's some salary, and I can't remember what it is. It's something like it's between like fifty and eighty thousand or something like that. That is the, that's the thing where there's no real benefit in terms of happiness beyond that because you can do everything like that if you if you're earning if you were earning sixty five thousand pounds like that you could go on a holiday to any place in the world you might not be staying in the same hotel as jeff bezos but if you really wanted to go to mauritius you could say i can go to mauritius something like that if you really, if you want to go and do these things there's not many things that you couldn't do you probably couldn't go to space for example yeah. <laughs> but but um but generally you're sort of you're sort of okay and and a lot of people will ask, say, "Like, I'd love to, I'd love to be, I'd love to have more money so I can go. I want to, I want to go and visit this country." Oh, you probably can. You probably can. And also, like, uh, doing something you enjoy is great. But then also, I remember my brother in his twenties, he he'd got a job as a um, 
what was he, an accountant working for one of the big four firms. And he, he was going through a bit where he would work for a few months, earn a significant amount of money, and then go and travel for eight months. So he'd have a few months he didn't really enjoy. So that's a way of doing it as well, sort of thing. It, it's, but there are countries in the world, if, you, if you're into traveling, there are countries in the world you can live very cheaply on for a few months if you, if you work and save up. So I, think, yeah, so, so I don't think there's one thing. The answer to me is clear that just chasing money is not the answer. No, and, and, and I fully support that, to be fair. I fully support that. Um, we're, we're coming towards the end of this interview now. There's just a few more questions. Um, so thank you so much for, you know, it's been an hour and a half I've been with you. So thank you so much, Robbie. And no hassle at all. I, I really Pleasure. appreciate that. Um, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> gravestone. Robbie Knox enjoyed my interview. <laughs> you, you're going to need a bigger gravestone. Soon you the wife is going to be spending more on the gravestone than the actual funeral. <laughs> um, <laughs> You'll, you'll be crying when you die. Go, oh, did you miss him? No. <laughs> Shout out so much. On the, on the <laughs> and it's all about Robbie Knox. There's nothing about yeah, me in here. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be getting one of the stones off of Stonehenge and putting that on top. <laughs> How much do you think on. that costs? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just, just go that night and get in the back of a pickup truck. If I... <laughs> um, so, yeah, just a few more questions. Um, how do you then switch off from the multiple roles? Because you've got the Binday Brewery. You've got Dry Lunch Productions, you've got the Happy Hour Podcast, you then create your videos, you're then a father, um, you're, you're then a, a husband as well, um, or, or a partner. And like, you know, there's so many roles that you that you have. How do you switch off and just have Robbie time? You've got to be kind to yourself, I think, and accept that you're not going to have time to do everything. And like when I moved to Norwich, I didn't really put out any YouTube videos for a bit because we just moved our kids to a new place my priority was making sure that they were happy here and settled as quickly as possible by taking them, doing fun things with them, helping them meet friends and do stuff, that sort of stuff. Um, so I think you've got to just go, there's times I can't do everything. I know I've got a really busy week on this week, as I quite often have. I've got to do these postcards. I've got to do a video that's going to take a day to do, a YouTube video, because I've got a brand deal that I contractually have to do by a certain date. I've got to edit and another video because of another brand deal or something. There's, there's stuff that I have to do. There's stuff that I want to do for, for people. So there's times of accepting that there are going to be times where you're really busy. There's going to be times when it's quieter. We've, we've had a pandemic where I've had loads of time to do stuff. I mean, so I think it's, I think being kind to yourself, try not to take on, too much stuff like the brewing stuff we haven't got another brew lined up at the minute because everything else is so busy for me and michael I do it with we've got so much other stuff going on i think you've just got to go pro and go at the weekends i'm not going to do it. i know i'm here it's sunday morning i'm doing this but i'm quite happy it's quite early in the day if this was going to be at lunchtime i'd probably say i can't do it but it's quite early get up i get up early anyway yeah, um right. and, and just get something done and and, and do it sort of things so i think just just trying to find just being kind to yourself and just saying, no, I'm going to take some time for myself now. And then let's talk about your next 12 months. Do you have any personal goals for the next 12 months? I would love to do the Happy Hour Live tour. I think it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. I think we've just got to make it happen. Jack suddenly reached this golden age of productivity where he's, because on the podcast, we got him, he was saying, I want to try golden, golden showers and stuff. So golden age, <laughs> golden showers is not, is not. Oh, maybe is not I can invite much. Jack onto this podcast yeah. and ask him about golden there's, showers. There's, there's your clickbait. You want to try golden showers? No. We've got reached a golden age because you want to try cold showers. Yeah. So he's been getting up. I said, look, and I was, and I was saying, I read a book called Atomic Habits. That's yeah. brilliant. I'd recommend to anyone about, about um, making things a habit. And so I said, get up, just get up and have a shower. And he's quite dismissive at the first. He's been doing it. He's had a cold shower every morning. Um, uh, and it's really been helping him. And he's, he's become really pr productive. So hopefully that'll help us all get the Happy Hour Live Tour up and running. That's what I'd like to do. Um, I'm doing less and less of my production company and more and more of creating my own stuff. So I'd like to get back doing Twitch. I'd like to focus more on, on making stuff and have less things that I have to do at a certain time so I can focus more on doing my own stuff because it is hard to balance these things because things become more busy. Suddenly I've got, I've got, I know I've got to do a few things for corporate clients that I can't ignore, but then that when the production company stuff's big, it means the YouTube stuff takes a hit. You do less stuff and it means 
you lose the momentum. So, so I think focusing myself more on doing happy hour and my own content, I think, is the future for me. I ask this question to a lot of people, and I think, especially first time guests. So you know, hopefully in the in the in the future, you know, you'll come back, and then I won't ask you this exact Anytime. same question. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd love to come back on whenever you want me. This gravestone, I'm not gonna lie, like. <laughs> Right. I mean, I've probably, uh, to be fair, I've probably killed that joke <laughs> right now. No, like... I, I will come back if you stop putting things on the gravestone. It's not fair in your life. It's not fair. <laughs> okay, let's forget if the gravestone. You, if anything you add, you've got to take something off for now. <laughs> you know what it is? It's because from that word association, you said the future and then you said death, long term yeah. death. It's just stuck yeah. with me. So now. <laughs> Quite a lot of the time, conversations with me make people think of dying. Don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, so the, I think it would mean a lot coming from you as well. So what if you had advice to any future content creators or people who want to pick this yep. up, what would your advice be? Okay. Um, I think uh, think long-term, uh, plan for years rather than months to, to make it success. Take a step back and look at where you are six months, a year ago, um, what you're doing there. I, say, I would say... Try and get better all the time. Look at, watch other things, see what they're doing. Try and emulate that. I'm not saying copy ideas, but I'm saying look at people whose content you admire and, and break down the videos. I, I remember when I was 21 or something, I remember thinking, I want to know a bit more about how stories are constructed. So I remember getting to, watching an episode of The Simpsons and going through and just writing down, okay, this scene, this happens, this scene, this happens. And I go, okay, so there's there's two stories. There's an A story and a B story sort of thing. And you learn, you can break down things by watching them. Watch, I mean, I, I I watch a lot of, whenever Casey Neistat puts out video, I think he's incredible. And, and I will learn things from the way he makes things. I think, I think consistency, doing it, being, being humble and not, and not getting distracted in the non, the things that don't matter um, is useful. And but yeah, I, th I think a lot of it is just, is just time. You look at, People look at Jack and think he's really successful. He was making videos for years at school. Everyone's taking the piss out of him. Then one day YouTube sent him a check for 60 quid and everyone at school is asking him how he does it, how you get into it sort of thing. It's, it's Bambino Becky is doing really well at the minute. She did it for like, I don't know, eight years, nine years. She's only like 23. <laughs> I mean, she's, people do a lot of work before they get to where they are. And... I think that's the key thing is just to keep going, keep getting better and work at it. It's not an overnight success, is it? Like, it can happen to some people, but I think yeah. the stories of overnight success are, are definitely far fewer than in between than the people that we're watching now who've been doing this for absolute years and then they gradually um, explode. Yeah. yeah, and my stuff is I've been relatively quickly me growing, but I've 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 got... 20 years of production experience behind it sort of thing so there's 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 overnight success that's obviously connected to it and there's other there's other elements of it sort of thing it's not just i might have just started doing youtube but it doesn't or relatively recently started youtube it doesn't mean i haven't been developing skills from other parts that help you out in that so yeah I, th I think i think just be patient get advice and all that sort of stuff be patient keep going and keep improving no oh, excellent and then the final question might be do you have a message for your audience uh well like as in as in advice as in sort of a, a sort of advice or what other things do people will say do people, do people, do people, Some people say generally thank their this? audience at this point thank that's good that's a good point yeah okay <laughs> um just just thank yeah cheers <laughs> cheers thanks for thanks for that thanks for being there um i'm impressed i'm always impressed by how nice everyone is so just yeah cheers for being nice <laughs> keep being nice <laughs> no brilliant well robbie Thank you so much for coming on. And I know I've said it a couple of times now, but top echelon of people that I probably wanted on the Scout Set podcast when I started this, you know, 20 months ago. Um, the fact that we've finally been able to make it happen means the absolute world to me. And I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed it as well. So thank you. Anytime you want me back on, let me know. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it, viewers. Robbie Knox has been a guest on the Scouting Centre podcast. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you click on the links below. You'll have Robbie's information, you'll have my information. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video. Tell me what your favourite part of this interview was, of this podcast was. Yeah, 
I'll see you on the next one. I'm Mr. Diz TV. He's been Robbie Knox, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye.